If I had to recommend one thing to act as a gateway into growing your own food, it would hands down be garlic. It's easy to plant and maintain. You get a huge return on your investment. It's not going to take up a huge amount of space in your garden and you can easily grow enough garlic to last the year. So let's take a look at how to plant some garlic. Hey darling and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kiri Martin and I'm just a city girl who wishes she was a country girl who is currently living in the burbs. If this is your first time here then I hope that you will stick around for some hints and tips on micro homesteading and how to become more self-sufficient. Um, if that sounds like something that you're into then go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you're always in the know about when I post new videos which is typically once a week. So one of the things that's important to know about growing garlic is there's two different types. There's hard neck garlic and there's soft neck garlic. The main difference is hard neck garlic is going to be typically what you would grow in a northern climate. It goes through a period of dormancy that is necessary for the bulbs to form to the complete size. Um, it is also going to give you what is known as garlic scapes, not scrapes, which is what I called it for a very long time which are great and you can find them at farmers markets and you can use them in the cooking. So that's one nice extra thing that you get from growing the hard neck garlic. So hard neck um, garlic types are going to be things like the porcelain garlic. So the two that I'm going to be growing this year are music and big boy. So those are two of the hard neck varieties. Um, soft varieties are going to be like a Sicilian gold or chestnut red. I did grow both of those last year. Um, I think I might have a couple of cloves hanging around so I'm going to pop those in. The ones I want to show you today are my jumbo cloves that I picked up from John Boy Farms. Um, it's not sponsored or anything, that's just who I like to get my garlic from. It's Canadian and uh, I've had good results. So here, when they say jumbo cloves, I feel like this doesn't do it justice. These things are huge. Like I've seen garlic clo or garlic bulbs. Did I say cloves? Bulbs? Yeah. That's definitely not something you want to mess up in a recipe. I'm gonna put this down now. So each clove, whoops, each clove is going to give you a new head of garlic um, in the next year. So typically you're going to plant in between September to no October, maybe November. I'm a little late. Typically I would have planted it mid-October, but I keep getting sidetracked. Um, so that's why it's going in today. Um, but you want to get it in before the ground freezes uh, so that it has enough time to set down roots, but we don't want to give it enough time to really start sprouting. So once the roots are set, it will go into its dormancy period over the winter and then in the spring it will start growing and then you'll harvest typically in the summer. Spring garlic, while it can be planted in the um, northern climates like where I am in Ontario in a zone 5b, um, you're typically not going to get very, very big bulbs. You might not even get a real bulb at all. You might get what's called a round, um, which is literally just a little round single um, bulb and uh, that can then be saved and planted in the next year and then the next year it should give you a whole bulb with individual cloves. Um, so I always do a fall planting. If you live somewhere where the climate is milder and you have a much long or continuous growing season then you can definitely plant in the spring or the fall or whenever you want. I am not so lucky. So. Um, also because I'm in a northern climate, I tend to grow mostly hard neck garlics because they are more resilient and they specifically need a dormancy period. I did also grow some soft neck garlics, um, but they don't tend to have enough of a long, enough of a growing season in a northern climate um, to get to their full size. So you're going to get typically smaller ones, uh, smaller bulbs at the end of it. So this year, I have music and big boy that I am going to be planting and you may be wondering why I got these massive jumbo cloves. Well, the other rule of garlic is the bigger clove that you plant, the larger bulb of garlic that you will get. So if you're planting piddly little cloves, don't expect to get huge garlics um, at the end of it. You may if you're lucky, but as a general rule, you want to plant the biggest uh, cloves that you can. So I'm going to try these guys out this year. Um, I think I have a few leftover ones from last year that had more variety um, and I'm going to pop some of those in as well. 
So another thing that's going to be important when you're planting garlic is the soil. It is, um, garlic is a very heavy feeder, so it's going to want a nitrogen um, rich soil um, and it's going to need a lot of organic matter. So it is good when you're planting garlic to put a nice layer of compost on so it can provide those nutrients to the garlic so that you again stand the best chance of getting the nicest bulbs at the at harvest time. Um, and then you're also not going, especially because it is the heavy feed, bleh, bleh, let me try again. Because it is a heavy feeder, you are going to want to try and um, practice, no, you're going to want to practice crop rotation, which generally is a rule you should be doing anyways, but specifically when you have certain things that are going to deplete the soil, you definitely want to move them around. So corn's going to deplete the soil, garlic is going to severely deplete, deplete the soil. Certain things like peas and beans are really good at adding nitrogen back into the soil. So that might be one thing to consider planting after your garlic is moved. The other thing that is nice is garlic ends up being a great thing to factor into planting a fall garden. So typically of what's considered a fall garden is going to be planted in the summer. So garlic is coming out in the summer, so that's a great thing where you can plan to put in the crop that you'll be harvesting um, in October um, or even November into that same spot, assuming that it's not going to also deplete nitrogen from the soil. I'll put in the description below the link to my video on how to plant a fall garden. Um, I will also include in there the link to my blog post on composting in case you want to start making your own compost um, or maybe already make it and it's starting to stink like there might be dead bodies buried in your backyard and I will talk about how to fix that. I hope to be doing a video on the composting but it's starting to get cold so I think I'll save that for next year. Okay, so we talked about having a soil that's rich in nitrogen and organic matter. The other thing you want to know about the soil in terms of garlic is it likes loose soil that is well draining. You don't want water um, just sitting around that bulb because that's going to lead to root rot. And in this case, we're essentially eating the bulb, which is under the ground. So we don't want to have that rotting before we go and harvest it. So make sure that your soil drains well. And also in terms of that, you wanna make sure that you're not overwatering garlic. It's typically gonna to wanna to get a deep watering every seven to 10 days, and that's about it. Um, you don't want it to just be watered constantly. It's not going to serve your garlic well. It does also like a full sun uh, location. So I'm gonna flip the camera. So as I have the raised beds, and I'm also going to use the square foot planting method for my garlic, I'm going to have these right in the center and then I'll keep everything to the either side for next year uh, lower so it's going to get the full sun and hopefully I will end up with ginormous garlic bulbs next year. The other thing I want to mention is this is my dipper and what a dipper is going to do is it's going to let you go in and you can move it around and make a hole which is where my garlic will go. It's not going to disturb the soil as much as, say, digging. I am going to be switching to essentially completely uh, no-dig gardening for next year and um, for moving forward. Um, so a dipper is going to be an important tool. It's basically going to replace my little tiny trowel that I used to use. So I have here my seating square and I also have my uh, garden journal. Um, I will put a link also in the description below for um, reasons why I think a garden journal is important. One of which is um, basically mapping out your garden and noting where things are. So especially because this is going to be just starting to come up in the spring. So I wanna make sure that I'm not disturbing where I've planted the garlic or planting stuff over it um, in case I forget because I'm prone to that. Um, so I will add in the mock-up of my garden with all the, the square foot planting sections marked off. Um, and I will note down where I've put which type of garlic. So as I mentioned, I have the jumbo music cloves and I also have the big boy ones and I'm going to grab some of the ones I have inside um, to put in, though I don't remember which is which, so it's going to be mystery garlic at this point. Um, but if you've been around here for more than like five minutes, you will know, or if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I absolutely love my seating square. I use this all the time. If it broke tomorrow, I would go buy another one. Again, not sponsored. I just freaking love this thing. 
So essentially it has the different holes which are starting to fade because I left it out in the sun, which is probably not a good idea. But essentially you have the different holes that correspond to a different uh, planting pattern. So typically for garlic, you could do about six per square foot. But again, because these are such large cloves, I'm only gonna do four per square foot. So I'm going to use um, the blue markers here um, just so they're perfectly spaced out and they have a lot of room to grow. So I am going to go ahead and put this down and start marking it out because it is cold out here and it is starting to rain. But I was determined to film this, so this is the predicament I find myself in. Okay, so I still have some stuff in here from before, so I have some, uh, I think that was my red kale or scarlet kale. I have some uh, dinosaur kale over there and I have some beets that are still in here. So I know my edge of my square foot pattern is about here. So I'm just going to put the seeding square down, use the handy dandy poker that comes with it. And I'm just going to mark where oh, these four holes are gonna go. And then I can move this out of the way and still see it. Then I will grab ye handy dandy dipper I actually didn't even know about dippers until I was watching Charles Dowding. I think I said that right. Um, I'll put a link to um, his site below. I absolutely use it. First, he's just like seems like a delightful man who I would want to hang out with. Um, who knows so much about organic gardening and no dig gardening. Um, and so I've learned a lot from him. Uh, and he was the one that mentioned the, uh, the dipper. So I am putting in, let me double check now, the music. So I'm going to take it and push it into the dibber hole. And then we're going to cover it all up. And then what I will do afterwards, I'm actually gonna make that a bit bigger. Um, what I'm going to do afterwards is I'm going to cover it up with um, some compost. And then I will probably even throw some mulch over that and then it's pretty much set it and forget it um, until the spring when hopefully I will start seeing these guys come out oh my god these things are massive I'm so excited so cover those guys up and then we will move on and do the next row how many do I have left got four left in this one so those will go there and then I'm going to do the uh, big boy over here so I'm gonna get that in and then I'll uh, we'll chat in a sec okay so I'm just about to put the last of the garlic cloves in and I just realized something I didn't mention that I probably should you plant them with the point up and where the bottom of the uh, the bulb was at the bottom so they go in with the little nubs pointing up. Um, might have been obvious in the video, but just want to make sure I call everything out. Get the last of these guys in there. And then we can call that done. I'm going to cover these up with a good amount of soil. And then we will get, as I mentioned, some compost on there and some mulch to keep them nice and warm um, and then hopefully next summer we will have some gorgeous garlic and then we can do a garlic braiding video which is yeah it's just fun I like doing it um, I also do it with the onions um, and it's a great way to store them but that is a video for another time so if you've planted garlic before, let me know down in the comments what types that you've planted, um, what is your favorite cultivar. There's over 120 different ones. Um, so let me know what ones you like. Uh, do you prefer hard neck or soft neck? And if this is your first time um, trying garlic, then let me know that as well. Okay guys, so that's the end of my garlic planting adventures on this cold and somewhat rainy day. Um, I'm gonna go in and warm up with a cup of tea. So until next time, happy homesteading and make food grow. So that's it guys. Uh, thank you for joining me on my garlic planting adventures on this cold and dreary rainy day. Um, I'm gonna go inside and warm up with the tea. And just remember, 
you don't need a whole bunch of land to start your homesteading journey. Homesteading is a spectrum. It's not a destination. So as long as you have some space and some homestead dreams in your heart, you can start growing food and becoming more self-sufficient. So until next time, happy homesteading and make food grow.